and welcome to Paleo Greenbird. I am Greenbird. I apologize if I'm hard to hear, but it is about 1 o'clock in the morning, maybe close to 1.30. I'm trying not to wake up everybody around me. I just had a hankering to do some flip tapping. There's something about <coughs> um, these late night napping uh, not videos, but like, um, I don't know, these, these late night napping sessions that I've been doing that are just extremely satisfying. The, uh, the summer is starting to come to an end. It's the end of August and fall is upon us. And that is, you know, you know that's my time. That's when I thrive. I love the fall. I love the cold weather. I love being able to go in the woods and you know, see the leaves and see the trees and everything. <clears throat> I can hear animals around me right now. Um, just yesterday uh, I had three deer in my yard. A mama deer and two babies. One that was a little bit older than the other baby. Literally, probably at the most 20 feet away from my window. It was just fantastic. And, um, you know, it, it ushers in the all the holidays, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, all the times that we just get to eat a lot of really good food and and have a bunch of fun. So to me, this is just you know the time of year that I start to come alive. So I've got this really junky piece of well that's not junky, I shouldn't say that. It's it's uh, just a big clunky piece of Flint Ridge that I'm going to try and reduce <clears throat> down to a preform. I think I'm going to start by taking off one of these corner edges. And like the last video that I that you that I published that you probably saw, I'm trying to do a better job of just working quickly, not thinking too much about what I'm doing, just reducing the piece. Chunk off there. Just try to work a little bit more quickly. It's really nice out here. You can hear the frogs and the bugs. Take this big side over here. Got a platform, but there's it sort of kind of tapers in a little bit. Oh, I just got a spark off of that when I was grinding. Let's see if I can do it again. I can smell it. Yeah. This is Flint Ridge. Just got a little spark off of that. That's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Beautiful flake right there. Uh, and I got a little chunky piece. I'll probably send that to Mr. Ten Bears. Throw that in my bucket. He does amazing things with those little chunks. If you've never watched his videos, Dave Ten Bears, he's on my page, you can find him. He does a lot of indirect percussion. He's really good at it. He has not been doing it long, but boy, has he come a long ways in a short time. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to try and blast that ridge off right there. I'm, I'm using my big bopper still. I probably should bill it down, but I don't know. We're just going to do it. Oh, there we go. Nice flake off there. Nice big flake. Could probably do something with it, but it's going in my bucket. 
<coughs> this one. So, <coughs> as you can see, I've got a fixed spot over on this side. I'm guessing you can see. I find that the camera always picks up a little bit more than what I can see when I'm looking at the camera, but it's thin over here, it's thick over here, so I need to work on that side. And that might require trimming. Just trying to get myself a little platform over here. I've got to be careful because I don't want to. I don't want to fracture this spot in here. I want to just thin this spot, so I do need to be a little bit careful. Where I take these, uh, these platforms. Oh, got some really nice flakes. Really happy with that. Alright, so I think I have a little platform here. It's a kind of a junky one, but I'm going to take it anyway. If I grind that good enough, I should be able to drive that ridge. I keep doing that. i got to stop doing that. Uh, I'm going to try it anyway. It's not ideal. I could, could be a little bit better, but... I don't know. I found it was sometimes with these platforms. <coughs> excuse me. Don't get too caught up in having the perfect isolated platform. And, you know, everybody says, "Oh, you got to has to be perfect," and this, that, and the other thing. And they, at the end of the day, you're just smashing rock. So if you know how you how you strike, opposed to how the platform looks, you'll be able to determine whether or not you can take that platform. And I think I can take this. Hopefully I don't smash this in half. That was, bad. That was terrible. Let's just uh, grind that again. It's not a big deal. It's just I missed the platform a little bit. I crushed the edges. And rather than um, you know just trying to take it again, just fix it. Do what you have to do. I mean, it's already, you know, an iffy platform. The platform is angled this way, and the ridge is this way. So it's still, it's sort of like, you know, one of those platforms where you're, and you're just hoping for the best. But you've got to do that sometimes. And here we go. And there it is. Beautiful flake. Absolutely gorgeous. Right off of there. So good. In my bucket it goes. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to work this around a little bit. Trying to flatten it out. I think I'm going to bill it down. I'm going to grind it just so it doesn't cut my fingers <laughs> while I'm looking at this thing. It's already, already flattening this out, so um, what I'm going to do now is, I think I want to take this ridge right here. I'm going to blast that ridge off. It's a low platform. You have to be careful because if I don't hit it right, it's going to probably just crumble chip, but if I hit it right, it will blast that platform off, and it will thin this rock out. It is really low, but if you've watched my videos, you know by now that I don't mind taking some platforms that are maybe 
not necessarily <coughs> excuse me optimal. I just have to kind of just gotta kind of do it. Go hit it with some intention. I did get some chatter. It's, it's kind of chattery, but that's all right. Still early in the game. So, gonna grind. And I need to, I need to find a way to thin out this fat spot right here. That is what I need to do. So, I'm gonna trim this up a little bit. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna trim this up on this side so that when I flip it over, I've got a good platform to drive off on that ridge right there. Hopefully, they don't smash this into a million pieces. There we go. See, I had to kind of tilt that a little bit, hit it, to get this. I don't know if you can see that or not, but see how that's flat? I had, in order to get an angle to drive down on that, I had to. Get an aggressive flake right there. Oh, I should throw that. But anyway, so that when I flip that over, now I've got that platform right there that's going to drive right down that that edge that I really want. So, did not need to throw that flake. Yeah, I'll find it tomorrow. It's no big deal. And I might have to build it up. We'll see. Don't be afraid to lose stone. I mean, you grab a big giant rock, don't think you have to get five points out of it. I mean, think about the task at hand. You've got this rock, you need a point, you need a knife blade, whatever it is you need. Oh, so cool. I you can't see it on camera, I'm sure, but I'm getting like tons of sparks off of this. Super cool. I love flint mapping at night. So I'm going down and I'm going across. And I've got this ridge right here. Here's my platform. Right? If you can see it. There's a ridge that goes straight down there. I'm going to use my small bopper because I think that that will do the job. Sounded good. Took off most of it, but I still have a bit of my platform left. So let's grind it. Let's toughen it up. Man, those sparks that are coming off are so cool. Yeah. I should be using a bigger bopper, I think. Great flakes, but I do think that I'm gonna fill it up. So, taking some flakes off the sides here. Got this big ridge in the middle. So let's take that next. Grind it, make it strong. Just want to get rid of everything that doesn't want to be there. Be aggressive with your grinding. Don't worry about chipping or chattering or anything like that. Anything that wants to come off is going to come off. If it wants to stay there, it'll be there. So this is kind of a strange... I'm going to use a big bopper, but I almost feel like I wish I had an in-between bopper. I thought I did have an in-between bopper. Oh, I do. Yeah, right here. So. So I've got my medium bobber. 
So, just kind of give you an idea. Got this big one right here. Got this little one right here. Big one again. And then little bop, uh, medium bopper. So, that's what we use. And then this, and the, honestly, this medium bopper here is probably about a one inch bopper. And I use this for probably three quarters of everything that I do. I just happen to well, not think of it right now. Just sort of having some fun. That's probably what I should have been using the entire time. Nice and strong. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, I got a ton of chatter. Let's, um, yeah, sure did. So let's go ahead and trim this up a little bit. Let's see what we can do. A different angle. Make sure when you're doing this so that you are supporting it because you you still can get in shock. So make sure you're you're you got contact with as many points of this stone as you can. Just because it's big, don't underestimate it. It will still snap on you. Take a look at it, make sure we're flaking things off kind of evenly. So I'm thick over here, so I'm going to try and dress this area over here. And again, you know, I started off with a big stone, but you know, if I end up with oh, nice microblades. Oh, this is a beautiful flake here. But if I end up with um, you know one really good. If I end up with one really good point, I don't care how big this rock was, it's still worth it. So. Get rid of all the sharp edges. I don't want to cut myself. Sounds like so many animals have died down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this rock, and I'm not sure how much is picking up on the camera because I know it's dark, but I'm going to look for those thick spots. Try and get rid of them as best I can, and I want to make sure I'm getting rid of them sort of symmetrically too. Like I know that there's a thick spot right here, but I also understand that this is really close to kind of one of the thin points, thin parts of the point. So I need to be cognizant of that uh, because if I try and thin that out too quickly, uh, chances are I'll just break I'll just break it in half. So I'm just gonna start beating on this a little bit. Just talking, smacking. Flip it over. If I feel like I can zigzag, I'll flip it over. If you don't know what zigzagging is, check out my videos. I have at least one or two on zigzagging. Time to take that fat spot.
Hopefully I don't break this in half. I could break this in half right here. Did thin that spot out. It's thinner in the middle. I have to be careful. I need to get rid of that thick spot in the front too. But if I if I'm not careful, I'll get end shock. And if I do this right, I'm gonna end up with a nice little preform. here on the tip. I'm still thinner in the middle than I am on the, the top or the bottom, which is not ideal at all. But, you know, this is flint napping. You don't always get exactly what you want. You just have to deal with it. There we go. Alright. So, flatten this out relatively decently still okay so you can see we flatten this rock out pretty good but there's still some thick spots over here so I need to see how can I attack those so I'm looking for platforms and I do see some now I want to make sure I see like what can I take tip to end leaving the middle as thick as I can till the till uh, you know the end. That's what I'm gonna do. I see some platforms here that I can take. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna take. Let's. Which one should I take first? Let's see here. take this one right here because I think this is going to leave me some platforms on either end. If you want to take a look at it, that's what the platform looks like. There's two of them there, but I'm going to take this one right here. And it's not the greatest platform, but if you've watched my videos by now, you, you know that sometimes I <laughs> just take those platforms that aren't so great. You can hear that sound. You know that sound is good. Thin that a little bit more, but I'm more concerned about this thick spot right here. I don't want to leave that too thick. So let's, let's get to it. In fact, right here, I'm, I'm just going to kind of zigzag that a little bit. I don't really have a platform, so I'm going to zigzag it, especially since... It's so thick on this one side. I'm just going to do that here. When I zigzag, I try and find the lowest points I can, just so even though I'm zigzagging, I'm still like kind of trying to take platforms. You know what I mean? So if you're zigzagging, even though you're just kind of trying to cut back and forth, Find a low spot. You might as well take that low spot, right? I mean, it's there for you. It's a freebie. And it helps you in the long run anyway. Now, I have a low spot right here. Can't wait to take that, but I'm going to take this one over here first. Just have to strengthen it. I'm still using my medium bopper. I could probably bill it down at this point, but I'm not going to. I do most of my work with this medium sized bopper. That was aggressive and it worked. Got lucky on <laughs> got lucky on it. Could go either way. Alright. 
I'm just flipping it over, trying to find. Yeah, that was a nice flake. Did you hear that? I'm trying to find that you know the angles that I can pop off a nice flake from. Whatever's low, you always want to hit whatever's low. As long as it makes sense. I mean, sometimes things are low, but they don't really make sense. You still don't want to take them. Now, I have a relatively decent reduction here on the middle, but look at this tip. It's pretty thick, and there's still some. There's even some cortex right there. So I need to, I need to address that before I do anything else. It's not a big deal. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to zigzag back and forth, do my thing. Sometimes I zigzag, sometimes I got to hit the same side more than once. Don't be constricted to, you know, what the rules are. Just do what makes sense. Look at the rock. Where does... Oh. Where does the rock want to be hit? It doesn't matter. I still have a decent rock. Look at that. Tip came off, but there was I uh, I mean, I'm not going to say that it wasn't my bad strike, but I, I, I feel like there was a, a fracture in there somewhere, but it doesn't matter. Either way, I still have a beautiful biface here that I'm working on. So I'm just going to grind this off. It looks really good. It's a nice shape. I like that. I'm actually not disappointed that I lost that piece. That piece might have just wanted to go away. It was a small piece. <coughs> Excuse me. So, now we have some extra cortex in the back here. I think I'm, I actually think I'm going to address that. Especially since this one here seems to give me a really nice platform. It's got that angle. I'm going to try and take it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Couldn't save it, but that flake went all the way straight up. In fact, you can see it went so deep and so straight up that it left kind of like a, a ripple effect over here for this next flake. Let's see if we get the same thing to happen. I've been having pretty good luck lately getting overshot flakes. I haven't really been trying for it, but, but it seems like I've um, had decent luck doing it. So I think I'm going to bill it down for this one though. The reason I, I flick my pad there is because any type of stone that's on there is going to affect the way that your flake travels. I've, I've talked about that in other videos, but you know, just to let you know. Yeah, nice thin flake. Look at that. Perfect. Now I'm going to have to get it from the other end. So, thinking this north to south, I do have an east to west flake that needs to be taken too, but you know, you just take them as you can get them. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Alright. Now I'm going to take the flake on the side. I could go a little bit, I could still thin on the tip there, but I don't have a really good platform, but I have a really nice platform going this direction, so that's what I'm going to take. Just to thin this out, and that'll probably leave me with another platform. Oh, that sounded good. Yep. Give me a nice thinning flake, but I still have a good platform there. So I'm going to take it again. Not sure. This is probably the world's most boring video. I don't know for sure or not, but I don't know. Whatever. 
So now I have to make sure I support. I'm going to make sure I touch as much of this as I can so I don't get end shock because I'm going to have to try to drive this way with this flake. Ooh, that wasn't good. You can tell by the sound of it that was mostly cheddar. Um, oof. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to work from the other side for now, try and clean that up later. Did you hear that? That sounded good, right? Just gonna do light, small flakes, just to kind of raise my platform because I feel like my platform is really low on this side. That will help me even things out a little bit. <laughs> my aim is not exactly as primo right now as I'd like it, but that's part of the fun. All right. Got a couple of platforms. Let's put them to work. I'm going to do this one first. It's not really a platform, I still need to adjust. I'm still adjusting right now. There we go. You can hear it though. You can hear those. Even when the adjusting flakes, you can uh, see, you can hear that. You can tell when it's a good flake and when it's just sort of like smacking rock. Right. We're already pretty thin. We're going for more. Good. Get those good strikes. So what I'm looking for, especially at this point when everything is, it's pretty flat. I'm looking for those low spots. Those low spots where, I, where I'm going to be able to drive it on the flake. Mediocre at best, but. Cool though. This is one of the really fun points of napping is when we really get to this, this thin point, this thin part. So, gotta worry about shaping at this part too, because even though you're just thinning, the thinner you get, the more you need to worry about that shaping because you don't have a lot of time to shape once you get thin like that. You know, if you get super thin, you're like, oh this is awesome, I'm super thin, then you don't have a shape. <laughs> Guess what? That doesn't mean anything. <coughs> so as you can see, this is not it's like all oh, kind of wonky. So 
I need to bring this tail in right here, which is what I'm going to do. But I'm going to do it while thinning, because that's what we do. So we're pretty close to having a nice little preform. Just keep an eye on the shape. Whenever you take a thinning stroke, or a thin, I'm sorry, a thinning flake, just keep an eye on you know where you are in comparison to the rest of the point. Pretty thin. I'm trying to do some shaping, and when I do my shaping, I'm also, you know, keeping an eye on what part of the point is above center line. So even though I'm shaping, I'm still giving myself an opportunity to, you know, correct. <coughs> excuse me, correct center line. Seems like kind of crushing here, but it's just shaping, really. It's okay if this is a little bit chubby, like you see, it's a little bit on the fat side, because maybe I want to make a point out of it, maybe I want to make a tomahawk out of it, maybe I want to make a blade out of it, it doesn't matter. What we're doing is we're getting this thin, in a relatively consistent shape. So that it knows what it wants to be. This one's got a step under it, so I'm hoping I don't break this, but I'm going to try and take it anyway. And I undercut that step. Nice. Yay for me. So I'm just trying to flip this thing back and forth and I'm going to thin it. Whenever I see a low spot, that's where I'm taking it. Just, oh, got a nasty step right there. Damn. Or, sorry, dang it. But I should be able to, I can get that up there. So I got this step right here. If you can see it. That's light. But I think I can blast through the base right here. The base is still thick enough to where I think I can take that out. I'm gonna try. Not bad. Got most of it. And I still have a platform. Give it another go. So let's do that. I hope I don't break this. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm really thin at this point. Yeah. Nice. So I did. I pretty much got rid of all of that. I still have some thicker platforms up here on the base to feather that out. Just have to be careful not to break this at this point. So 
but I think our preform was pretty much done at this point. Yeah, I'm supporting the tip and the base, just trying to eliminate any, um, you know, I just don't want any end shock at all. <clears throat> so there's there's a lot I could do to touch this up. This is so thin. I think I'm going to grind this. I'm going to call it good. Get all the little stuff off. It doesn't want to be there, and this will also make awesome platforms for future thinning. But I mean, this is uh, when, when I show this to the camera, it's, it's pretty thin. I mean, in my opinion, for using indirect, I mean, for using direct percussion, it's not bad at all. It is a little bit turtly though, so when we finish this off, we're going to have to skin off some of the top there. But that's no big deal. I, I, there's tons of platforms I can see right here. I could probably do it right now, but I'm tired. It's late. Let's just call this a preform. This is what we ended up with. Let's weigh a little bit so you can see it. Yeah, let me take my safety glasses off. So you have it's relatively thin. I'd say that's pretty thin. It is a little bit thicker on this side here than on the other side. So we will need to thin that down a little bit. Probably just drive some flakes off the bottom. But all things considered, that's pretty thin. I'd call that a decent preform. So hey, thank you so much for joining me at 1.32 o'clock in the morning. This is Paleo Greenbird. Please like, please share, please subscribe. Hope you're having an awesome day. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. I just uh, can't tell you how excited I am. That follows here. So Paleo Greenbird, and I am signing out. Later.